Welcome to the Idea Maker tutorial. To begin, we have a model loaded. This is the Bulbasaur from My Mini Factory. Most models to begin, we start by viewing to make sure everything is in place and on the build plate. From here, if we need to make any changes to the model or the positioning, we can use all of the icons in the top such as pan, move, scale, and rotate. In the right here, we see that the model has a problem. It has 23 non-manifold edges. To fix this, use the repair button. The speed of the repair will vary from computer based on the capabilities. Once the repair has been completed, your model will have a little check mark next to it and it will be ready to print. Here we have the move icon. While this is selected, we can move the selected object in X, Z, and Y. There are some reset buttons there, such as make center on platform and reset completely. These will bring all the values back to zero. Next, we'll go to printer, then printer settings, and set our printer. From here, you can make any changes, such as if you have, second, if you have a second extruder or a single, what kind of filament you're using, and if you have a V2 hot end. Please note, that most printers that come out now will be equipped with V2s automatically, so this should be set. If you do in fact have a dual extrusion unit, please set the extruder count to 2, and you, from here you can set the filament type as PLA or ABS. Also note that for each PLA and ABS there is a corresponding V2 hot end extruder set up. Please make sure to keep those set to V2 hot ends if your printer is a V2 hot end. To begin slicing, hit the play button or the I button in the center. Here you'll see that your presets that we just set are still activated. There are three default tabs, high quality, standard, and speed. These are your three profiles. You can copy them or modify them by using the buttons on the right. In the edit template, you get the basic raft on or off, supports on or off, and different styles of supports, fill density, which is your infill, and shells, which controls how many shells are on the outside of the model. For this model specifically, we are not going to use any support. In the advanced settings, you can manipulate most every setting possible. In the cooling tab, we have all of our temperatures. Note that the left and right nozzle have their own individual temperatures. For this model, being that we are doing single extrusion, we are going to turn the right nozzle completely off. For the bed temperature, we can change that to any value. For PLA specifically, we use 40 to 60 Celsius. Once you have completed your changes, you can hit save and close. And that will keep that profile with those settings. Once you have sliced, the model will be ready to print. Once the slicing is completed, you'll get an estimate. The file name, the estimated time, the estimated amount, and the estimated price of the model. Please note that because of the values, these can vary. RAISE is working hard to constantly increase the accuracy of these predictions. This is what the model looks like when it is ready to be printed, and this is what the printer sees. So inside, you have your infill, 
you can see the outer layers and the raft. The upload function utilizes the Wi-Fi connection and you can export directly to whichever printer you select. Before you are able to directly upload to a printer, you must connect that printer to the Wi-Fi network directly. This has to be done at the printer. Once you have it connected, you will see the printer on the network. You can also connect to the printer using the connection button up in the top right. That will be covered in the next video. The size of the model will affect the speed. You can also discard any model that is currently being uploaded if you feel that you do not like the slice. In this case, we are going to stop the upload so that we can change the sliced functions. If we do in fact want support on this model, we can go back to our slice in the edit template menu, select support, and you can set exterior or everywhere. In this case, we would like it to be everywhere. In the advanced menu, you can go to the support and raft, and you can change the infill ratios and all the functions for the infill. If you like, you can load dual extrusion and have the support or raft extrude out of a secondary nozzle with a separate filament. This can be simply another color to distinguish between support and part, or this can be with a support material. In cooling, because we've, cho we've chosen a right extrusion, we should change the temperature to that material's preferred setting. In general, we recommend that the right extruder stay 10 degrees higher than the left even with the same material. Once again, when slicing, the speed of the slice depends on the size of the model and the speed of the computer. If you feel that your settings were incorrect and your slice time is taking too long, you can use the cancel button. We have just used the preview button that comes up after the slice has completed. In this picture, we can see that the orange is the secondary nozzle, in this case the right, and the left extruder is the white model. The raft and support are both in orange, and then there is a orange wall around the half mark, the halfway mark of the model. The outer wall is called the wipe wall. It can be enabled or disabled in the ooze tab. This wipe wall helps to eliminate some of the over extrusion that happens when the model switches from one nozzle to the next. The time estimation for this model, now that we are on dual extrusion, is five hours and two minutes, rather than the two hours it would have taken on single extrusion with no support. It's also compensated the material amount, and it will now tell you the individual nozzle material amount used. From here, we can change it back to only left extruder and go back to a single extrusion only. Once again, we have sliced the model with single extrusion in mind, just as the first slice. With single extrusion only and support with raft, our time is four and a half hours. The wipe wall has been turned off because there's only one extruder active. All supports and all rafts are now left only. 
If we wanted to change to Ride Extruder only to print this model, we can go to View, click on the model, and the extruder can be selected left or right. You can use separate colors to determine which nozzle is currently active. This now will set the default extruder to the right for this print. If you have multiple models, you can set them to be one nozzle or the other by doing the same method. If we go to our slice, we can now see that everything is still on left extruder and we will have to change them to the right extruder if we only want to use the right extruder for this model. Now that we have the correct settings, we can slice the model. The model will now be printed only on the right side of the nozzles. So now, just like the model before, we have the model itself on the right nozzle and all supports on the left, completely inversed. The same values have been applied, the same time is also activated, and the same material amount. The two nozzles have just been swapped. The wipe wall was reactivated because of the dual extrusion, and you can see that the wipe wall is a dominant white, but there are still orange lines in it. This is the basic guide on how to set up the idea maker for printing. As a bonus, here is something we have been working on. If you go to model and auto ungroup, a single STL can be split into multiple parts. So now we have two models that are completely separated and can be saved out as such. Please keep in mind that this is not completely accurate as of yet and your results may vary, but for the most part, the function is currently working. If you want to put them back together, hold control, select the other model, and align together. We'll bring them back to their original positions. Both models are currently orange, meaning that they are dominant to the right nozzle only. Select one of the nozzles and change it to the left extruder. Now, both models have one nozzle to themselves. From here, we can go to Select Template and change the model. Remember, we do not need support for this model, so we can actually turn it off. Both nozzles have been heated to the same values before, and all settings should stay the same. This is a note saying that the nozzle, or the model on the right nozzle, is not being supported. This is true and should be ignored because the second model from the left nozzle is currently supporting the right. As you can see, by separating the models and making them one on each nozzle, we still have a wipe wall that extends up a little further than before, and our average time has increased by two minutes, whereas the amount of filament used on one of the nozzles has increased by 12 grams. These estimates could be off as this is a newer technology. From here, we can upload as before and notice the model size is slightly larger. In the next video, we will be showing some more functions of the Wi-Fi capabilities and here is the preview of how we would connect into one of the printers. This will give you the ability to use a touchscreen on the computer.